Uh, this is the exact same problem as homework 7.3, which I did a tutorial for, so you can watch that. Um, the only difference with this problem is that it's air standard rather than cold air standard. So same diagram, everything is the same, except for when we have a constant entropy process. And um, just a quick recap of where those two processes or four processes happen. Um, in compressor one, that's a isentropic process. Um, but this time we're going to assume variable specific heats. And then in compressor two, again, we're assuming it's an isentropic process, but we're looking at variable specific heats. So this is an air standard problem. So we're going to use the ideal gas tables. And then we had our regenerator, we had another heat here, and then a turbine. That's another isentropic process, so that's where there'll be a difference. And then another turbine with an isentropic process. So turbine one and turbine two. So let's just look at those components. Um, of course, we had this coming out, going back in here through another heat exchanger, finally back. So this is state one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the ones we need to be concerned about um, primarily are the isentropic processes. Now, when we find the enthalpies at our other states, um, we are going to need to look up tables rather than use CPT. So for cold air standard, we had that H equals CPT. So we're not going to use cold air standard for the air standard method. We have that the enthalpy is a function of temperature from the ideal gas tables. So we're not going to use that. The other thing was P2 over T1 equals P2 over P1 to the K minus one over K. We use that for the cold air standard. We will not be using that for the air standard. We'll be using PR2, which is a function of T2 over PR1, which is a function of T1 equals P2 over P1. Of course, for all the processes, uh, the two compressors, the two turbines, that they'll have different subscripts for the states. All right, so let's just look at, um, and it looks like this problem, I had several of the answers shown there from the example problem. So we can kind of see where these values come from. Uh, I'll just put the equations. So for H1, it's a function of T1, where T1 is given as 300K. So we go to the ideal gas tables, we go to 300K, and we find out that it equals 300.19. And so that came from the tables, ideal gas tables. Uh, table 823. Or 822. Then we want to find the relative pressure, same thing. So P. R1 is a function of T1, where T is given as 300K. So we just go over a few more columns, and we find out it's 1.386. Uh, so in this case, uh, you'll notice that was the same value we got for our simple um, Brayton cycle, and that's because we had the same um, temperature, T1, as we do in this problem. Then to find PR2, so our first process is the compressor one, so that is an isotropic compressor. So we find that PR2 equals PR1, which is a function of T1, times um, our pressure ratio, P2 over P1, which is given, which is called RP1. 
So in this case, our P1 equals P2 over P1, and our P2 equals P4 over P3. And we have an extra state because of the heat exchanger. Okay, so then we find PR2 that way. Once we find PR2, we can get, so we found enthalpy at state one, we found the relative pressure at state one, the relative pressure at state two, and then the temperature at state two. Once we have PR2 from the ideal gas tables, we can find T2 as a function of PR2. So we solve for PR2, and then we go to the tables with that PR2. So we look in the PR2 column. We're probably going to have to interpolate, and we'll find what T2 is. We can do the same thing for enthalpy of 2. So it will be a function of PR2. So in this case, we go to the ideal gas tables. PR2 is 3.8808, and we look for that in the tables. Um, and it probably won't be exactly in there. Let me see. There's a 3.806, which is close, and a 3.481. So we'll have to interpolate between those values. And when we do, let's just see, we get something between um, actually 3.806 and 4.153 is what it's be between. So a little bit higher than 400, less than 410. And we find out it's when we interpolate, it's 402.16. We'll do the same thing for enthalpy. Um, and then, so enthalpy for state two, and then pressure at state two is simply just P1 times RP1, just like we did in the previous problem. So we have, Pressure to, if I can find that, uh, pressure to there. Um, we found T2. We found enthalpy at state two. And finally, pressure at state three um, equals pressure at state two. It's an isobaric process. So P equals constant for process two, three. So that one, pressure stays the same. Then we move on to uh, the temperature. The temperature at state three is the same as the temperature at state one in this problem. It doesn't have to be, but since the temperatures are the same, the enthalpies will be the same. So, so H3 in this case will equal H1. So we don't need to find it again. We could look it up again. Um, that's, I guess, by coincidence, if in the problem I had it cooled down to 310, then it would be a different enthalpy. It's a different temperature. but So that one's easy. The relative pressure at state three, we're going to do exactly the same way. So I'll do it just once more. But um, now we use, instead of state one and two, we use that PR4 over PR3 equals P. Four over P three, the K minus one over K, and we note that P four over P three is our P two, so we get that P R four equals P R three P two to the K minus one over K. And I guess I skipped how to find um, PR3, but let's see where. So I might not have asked for that, but we note that state three is equal to, or temperature three is equal to temperature one, which is 300K. So since enthalpy is only a function of temperature, H3 will equal H1 and PR3 
will be the same as PR1. Not because it's an isentropic process, it just happens to be at the same temperature. So uh, the PR is a function of temperature. So I want to write that as a function of T3 and P. R1 is a function of T1. So if T1 equals T3, then PR3 will have to equal PR1 since PR is only a function of temperature, right? The same way for the enthalpy. So then I have PR4 and the problem goes on. Um, really, that difference is just once we know the temperatures, instead of using CPT, we use the tables to find the enthalpies from the temperatures. We use the tables to find PRs from the temperatures. And then for our isentropic processes, we use this relationship instead of this one that I've crossed out here. So don't use those relationships for an air standard problem. All right, and if you need more help with finding the regenerator effectiveness and all those things, you can watch uh, homework videos 7, 1, 7, 2, and 7, 3. Right, I hope this helps. And this is um, the example problem. So if you want to see, if you want to continue working on this problem and get the rest of the values, um, you could do that by typing example for your code in the homework system. I hope those videos help and um, that you can do well, especially on this problem because homework 7, 4, will be more than likely on your next exam, a problem just like it.